Hi, I'm Jeff Crawford from Crawford's Auto Repair in Mesa, Arizona. Today we're going to do a lesson on uh, tools and safety. This is one of 12 lessons available at our website at www.crawfordsautoservice.com. Uh, we're going to start out with an introduction of some tools. Over here we have some uh, disposable shop towels. Here we have reusable shop towels. These can be used for cleaning up oil spills, wiping your hands down, cleaning your tools off after use. Here we have a a set of metric uh, combination wrenches. Uh, there's also SAE or standard available. Here we have a tire pressure gauge and inflator. This is capable of inflating the tire and checking the pressure when it's connected to a hose on an air compressor. Here we have a flashlight. Very useful tool in the shop. When you're working on a car you need to see what you're doing clearly. Up here we have a 12 volt test light. Test light is used for uh, checking fuses or checking for power and grounds on anything electrical in the automobile. Here we have a complete quarter inch metric and standard socket set. Um, here we have conventional uh, slotted screwdrivers and Phillips. This would be a, a Phillips screwdriver. This would be a slotted screwdriver. Variation of sizes. Here we have a large pry bar. That just, this could be used for a number of things when repairing an automobile. Here's a hammer. Again, we all know what you do with a hammer. Um, this is another set of sockets. These are uh, impact sockets. They're typically black in color. These are to be used with an impact wrench or a hand tool. You don't want to use a chrome socket with, a, uh, with an impact or it can damage the socket. The chrome will chip off and the socket isn't designed to be used with an impact. Here we have a funnel. The funnel is obviously used to fill the various fluids of a vehicle. You want to make sure the funnel is clean before, uh, before you use it to fill anything up. If there's been oil in here, you certainly wouldn't want to mix that with brake fluid or, or coolant. So you want to make sure the funnel is clean before you use it. Um, here we have a battery tester and an alternator tester. This checks voltage and amperage of a battery or a charging system. Um, here we have safety glasses. These should be worn all the time you're working in the shop. They protect your eyes from debris that can fall from the vehicle or, or fly off it. Often there's uh, you know, fans and air tools running. Debris is often airborne and can get in your eyes. Here we have an automotive owner's manual. This owner's manual has lots of valuable information in it, uh, as well as lifting points, safety features, how to check the fluids, what types of fluids you need, Lots of information is in here. Even as a professional mechanic, I often refer to the owner's uh, manual for information. It's easier to find than looking for it on the internet or through a service manual. Here we have an automotive scan tool. You plug this into a vehicle to communicate to multiple computers in the car, whether it be ABS or emissions control, airbags, it's capable of all those things. Uh, we use that to get diagnostic trouble codes as well as to view data that's available on some vehicles. Over here we have a standard jack, tire iron, and a spare tire. These represent uh, typical equipment that would come in a vehicle for an emergency situation if you need to change a tire or even in your yard in, in the right conditions you can use these to uh, service or change a tire. This is a jack stand. This is what we would use to support a vehicle after it's been lifted with the jack. This is the only safe way for you to go underneath the vehicle is to support it with the jack stand. Here we have a, a larger hydraulic jack. This is a little easier to use as well as a little bit faster. You would uh, use it much like the smaller jack over here. The same lifting points. You raise the vehicle. Again, this is not safe for you to go under the vehicle with this jack. You would only lift it, support it with the jack stand. And uh, at that time, then you can go underneath the vehicle. Okay, that's it for tools. Okay, now we're going to go over some safety rules in an automotive shop, or if you're repairing your vehicle at home, these rules would apply there as well. Number one, never work alone. An accident can happen. You always need to have somebody there to, to assist you or to call 911 if necessary. Number two, always wear eye protection. Often debris can fly or fall off of a vehicle. It can get into your eyes. It can be very painful and damaging to your vision. Avoid loose clothing, long hair, anything that could be could get caught in the engine or moving parts of the vehicle. Stay clear of moving parts of a running vehicle. Obviously your hand could get caught in a, in a drive belt or a fan. It could, it could maim your hand or, or cause severe 
physical harm. Be aware of hazardous chemicals that you're working with, such as oil, gasoline is flammable, sometimes brake cleaner, the uh, brake dust from a vehicle can be hazardous as well. Uh, keep a flushing station nearby for eyes and skin. Keep proper cleanup materials in case of a spill. So if you spill some oil or some gasoline, you need to have the proper materials ready to clean that up right away. Never go under a vehicle that is elevated improperly. We'll go into that deeper later on. Keep a fire extinguisher in the shop and make sure all mechanics know where that fire extinguisher is and how to properly use it. Have a planned exit route in case there's a large fire or accident that you need to get out of the shop immediately. Keep an emergency response number handy, posted clearly in the shop so that everybody knows what number to call if there's an accident or an emergency. Now I'll show you how my shop is properly prepared for an emergency situation. We'll start over here on the left. Clearly we have a fire extinguisher. It's clearly labeled. It's easily accessible. It's a type ABC. This means it's capable of, uh, of fighting all types of fire, whether it be gasoline, flammable liquids, paper, electrical. A, B, and C means it's capable of all types of fire. Now over here we have a first aid kit. If you have a minor injury, a cut, you need a band-aid. Um, some antibiotic cream, all that stuff is readily available in here. Right next to that, we have the emergency call number. We all know that 911 is the emergency number you call anywhere in the United States for any emergency, you call that number. They'll be able to figure out where you are. You can explain what the problem is. Down here, we have a simple hose bib. Uh, this will work sufficiently for an emergency if you need to flush your eyes or to wash your hands. There's also a sink available in the, in the back restroom or in the main office. Uh, you just turn the hose on, flush your eyes out with the, the water until the burning has gone away. If the, if the injury is a little bit more severe than that, maybe you'd want to have somebody take you to an emergency room or call 911 if it's severe enough. Next, we're going to go over here and demonstrate a oil spill and what to do in an oil spill. So to do that, I have a drain pan with a small amount of oil in it. I'm going to pour some on the floor here, uh, a small amount. So you accidentally kick an oil pan over, you have an oil spill. Right next to that, which I always know where this is, I have some oil absorbent and a cup in here. I'm going to scoop up some oil absorbent, sprinkle it on there. You want to put quite a bit on it, stop the oil from spreading around and completely cover the spill. It, it takes, you, you want to use enough to absorb the oil completely. The longer you leave the oil absorbent sit, the more completely it, it will absorb the oil and the easier it is to clean up. Now, if it's right in your work area, you may want to leave it sit for a few minutes, sweep it up, then wipe the excess oil with a rag. Over here, I have a, a spill that I demonstrated earlier. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sweep that up with a simple broom and a dustpan. We'll show you what the end result is. So there you have it. Almost all the uh, oil has completely been absorbed. You maybe take a disposable rag if you'd like. Um, wipe a small amount off the floor that's left. And uh, this can be disposed of in a, in a typical trash can. That's how we perform a oil cleanup. Next I'm going to demonstrate proper lifting points on a vehicle. They can be found in the owner's manual. This is, the, uh, this is a picture in the manual of the lifting points again. Here's a, a zoomed in picture. So we're going to go underneath the vehicle in this area and this area and look for these two notches and that's going to be where we place the jack. Now we'll walk over to this vehicle show you where we place the jack exactly. This vehicle was lent to us by Myrex Marketing for purposes of this video. There's ad space available for mobile advertising in the Phoenix area at MyrexMarketing.com. For more information, go to MyrexMarketing.com. That's M-I-R-E-X Marketing.com. Now I'll show you the exact lifting points of this vehicle. Right down here, you can clearly see a notch here and here. So you would place the jack exactly between these two notches and then raise the vehicle up. 
Um, again, when you raise a vehicle at this point with the, with the jack, it's not safe to go under it. It's only designed to raise the vehicle so you can change a tire or do any kind of work that's outside of the vehicle. You never want to put any part of your body underneath the vehicle while it's supported by a jack. We would always use a safety stand to support it once you need to go underneath the vehicle. Um, that concludes proper uh, lifting points of a vehicle. That's it for this lesson on safety and tools. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.